Hello everyone and welcome back to part 5 of our match tutorial series. In the last part we covered swapping potions, I'm able to click a potion and move it to a new location on the board. When there is a match, it will stay in that location and if I move it to somewhere there isn't a match, it repeats back to its previous location. In this part we're going to be covering super matches, which happens when you have more than one angle that you match on. So for example I have a long horizontal match here, I could have two potions here on either side that would also be blue, and that would make a super match because I've got a three match going down and a long horizontal match. This can happen with threes and threes, and ultimately we're going to be logging out the different types of matches using our match result that we've used in an earlier part of the tutorial. So I'm going to jump into my potion board script, that's the only one we're going to be working in today and we're going to be working inside of our checkboard method and creating one new function. So inside of checkboard we have some logic here, we create our potions to remove, we loop through our board, we check to make sure that the board is usable at that location, we get the potion on that location and then we check to see if that potion is not matched, we want to then run some matching logic, we have that is connected to do that matching at the moment. That returns the number of matched potions that are of the same type and that are adjacent to each other. We then check to see if we have three or more potions, and if we do then we wrote this template here that says complex matching and that's what we're going to be writing today. Then we add our potions to potions to remove, we loop through and we mark them all as matched, and then we say has matched is true, and then ultimately we return our, our has matched. So in order to do our complex matching we're going to reuse our match result. And this match result, remember, has a match direction, and in there we added a direction for super, but we haven't used it yet. So I'll create a super matched potions, and that will be equal to super match, and this is a method that we're going to write that's going to take in our matched potions. Now I'm just going to hit Alt Enter, generate that method, and then tab down to it. So now you can see here we have a private return type of match result, super match, that takes in a match result and we'll call that underscore match potions just because I like to do that with my variables. Okay, so let's run through some of the high level logic of what we're going to be doing in this method. Because we're passing in a match result, a match result has a direction, so we know what type of match we've made coming into this. And all we want to do is say if we have a horizontal or long horizontal match, then what we want to do is basically do a vertical match against each of the horizontal potions inside of that match. So we can loop through the potions in my match, create a new list of potions. This will be my extra matches, so we'll have extra matches. And then we just want to do the same matching logic that we did in our normal match, where we basically just start with a potion and we do a check above and below the potion to see if we have the same type of potion. And if we do, do we have enough of them to create a new match? If so, then we've got a super match in this case. So we'll be calling check direction, and because this is a horizontal one that we're looking at, we would be doing a vertical. So we'll be doing up, and then we'll do a check direction down as well. And then we'll look to see, do we have two or more extra matches? If we do, we've made a super match. And in that scenario, just return a new match result of type super, because remember we created a match result direction in here called super earlier, but we never used it. And if we don't, still return our extra matches because they contain our match potions already. So we'll still return extra matches, but it will just be a three match that we made in that case. And that's really the full logic that we want to be doing for our horizontal, so we just want to do the exact same when we get to our vertical. So in here, this is just going to be a vertical, and we're going to be a vertical again. So when we get to that, we'll just copy and paste it and replace it with vertical, and we've pretty much done our super matching logic. So we can start with our if statement. We'll say if match results dot direction is equal to match direction dot horizontal, or if match results dot direction is equal to match direction dot long horizontal, then we've got a horizontal match that we're working with. So we now need to create a new for each loop of those potions. So for each potion pot in matched results dot connected potions, we're going to create a new list of type potion. We'll call that extra connected potions and we'll set that to a new of itself. And then we just need to do our check directions. So we'll say check direction. Remember this is a horizontal match, so we want to do an up and a down check. So we'll say vector two int and we're going to be doing a zero one, which is an up and then extra connected potions are what we pass in. We'll then do the same to look down, which is going to be a minus one. And now that we've checked up and down for that type of potion, we're then going to say if 
extra connected potions dot count is greater than or equal to two, that means we've made a super match. So I'll say debug dot log. I have a super horizontal match. And then all we're going to do is we're going to say extra connected potions dot add range of our matched results dot connected potions. So we're adding the original potions in that we have the match against. And then we're just going to return that. So we'll say return new match result. And we say connected potions is equal to our extra connected potions. And our direction is equal to match direction dot super. Then we can put a semicolon at the end of this. And then outside of this for each loop, if we've looped through everything and we still haven't made a super match, and now if we've looped through everything and we still don't have a match result, then we just want to return our original match result. So we'll say return match result connected potions are going to be equal to match results dot connected potions. And our direction is going to be equal to our matched results dot direction. So we're just giving it itself back and put a semicolon at the end of that. Now this is the full logic that we want to do. So I'm just going to copy everything that I've got here and we're going to paste this down below. And now we're going to be doing our direction for our vertical match and a long vertical match. And now this doesn't have to be an if, it can be an else if, because we don't need to run both sets of logic. Instead of doing a vertical match here, we're going to be doing a left and right match. So we'll put this as one and then we'll put that as minus one. And rather than having a horizontal match this time, we're going to have a super vertical match. And then you'll still find that we have an error at the top of this. And that's just because at the very end of this, we need to return null. And that's in the situation where somehow you've passed in something that doesn't have either horizontal or a long horizontal or vertical or long vertical match, which shouldn't be any match type that we have as possibility. But this will give a return type of null, which will allow it to return no match result. Okay, and I've just gone in and I've added in all of those comments just in this specific places so that it's readable if anyone downloads it in the future. So now we're gonna scroll back up to our check board method and we'll have to do a few minor changes in here. So right now we're taking our match potions, we're working out whether we have three or more match potions. If we do, we're then performing the super match, but we're not actually using it at all. So all we have to do is change our match result here to add range of our super match potions. Remember, even if we didn't have a match, we've turned our match potions into super match potions even if it's just three and a, and a normal match. So we can just add this range regardless and then do the same instead of doing our match potions here, we do our super match potions and that should be all that we need to do. And this will be a little hard to prove because we don't have cascading potions. So we're gonna cheat a little bit to force a super match so we can prove that it's working. Okay, so we've got one we can form. I've got this long horizontal match here. You can see I've got a long horizontal match of white potions at the moment. If this potion were to move down, we would then have a super match because we have a four horizontal and then a three vertical as well. And the number of potions that we should be matching overall in that case would be six because we've got these four and those two. So we add together to create a total of six. We don't add this potion a second time. Now in here, I'm also going to, because we don't have the ability to delete potions right now, I'm just gonna mark everything as unmatched because I manually created that match just before. And now we have no match potions. So if I click this here, we should get a super horizontal match. That's excellent. And that super horizontal match is made up of these potions here. So when we were to do a deletion of these, we could have separate logic here, which would then merge these potions together to make something in this cell where the super match has occurred. Or we could just remove all the potions in that and grant extra points or something to a user instead. And just to show that everything else is still working, you can see that I still just get normal long matches as well. We don't end up with a super match that tries to add one extra potion or anything weird like that. This will just turn a normal three match. So everything in there is really working as it was prior. We've just added in this super logic. And that's everything for this tutorial. In the next part, we're gonna be dealing with cascading potions. It's gonna get quite confusing, but you'll get that nice flow effect of potions refilling from the top. So I will see you guys in the next video. As always, it's important to thank the people who make these videos possible. We have Lanky Moose, Castle Coders, and Zope in the silver tier. And if anyone else would like to sign up, the Patreon link is patreon.com slash Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.